Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Tech Engagement Gallery here at the Vancouver Aquarium. My name is Madeline, and welcome to you, Eric. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us on Northern Spotlights, the program that takes us north with the Vancouver Aquarium. Eric, what is your official title here at the Aquarium? Director of Arctic Programs. Ah, uh, that, sounds, that sounds very exciting and fun. Is it, it is. a pretty good job? It is. I get to spend a lot of time in the north with some great people up there and uh, get involved in research, get involved in education programs, work with youth in the north, get to do all kinds of great stuff. That sounds pretty fantastic. And I guess sometimes when you up, you're up there, you come across some pretty neat animals. And on true. the screen behind us, we have a photo that I is, I believe, in your office or a similar photo in your <laughs> office. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, a young lady, a fox, that, uh, that we spent some time with outside Cambridge Bay. Can you one tell us late that's evening. Right? Ah. Sure, I can. So we, um, that picture was probably taken at uh, maybe two o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. Um, it was that's summer, so it was light. And we had been spending, uh, we spent probably two hours, three hours there hanging out at this fox den and, and watching the fox and taking pictures. And, and uh, so I started with my longest lens because we were farthest away. Right? And slowly, as the fox got more comfortable, I'd shed my lenses until I got down to my shortest lens and was real, real near wow. to, the, to the fox. And after about uh, two or three hours of hanging out with this fox, and, and she was just being really cooperative and very, very friendly, she got up after all this time. She walked over to one of my lenses. She gave it a sniff. She gave it a lick. She tried to pick it up. And then she peed on it. <laughs> she turned around right there and just walked off. And that was it. She said, I'm done. Thanks yeah. very much. I had a great time. It was a good photo shoot. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do with that lens? I uh, took a picture of it first. <laughs> right. And then I cleaned it off. <laughs> and I still use it. You still use it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, pretty, that's a pretty amazing story. Uh, you're not only seeing some pretty amazing animals up in the Arctic, but your main role up there is more working with people. Is that correct? Well, yeah. Um, you know, we often forget that the Arctic is inhabited, mm. that, that uh, there are about 100,000 people or so in, mm. in the Canadian Arctic. Mm. And, uh, and I get the opportunity to work with, with people in these northern communities quite a lot. And what sort of things are you doing with people in these communities? Well, we do several things. You know, as, a, as an organization, we believe pretty strongly that you can't take the environment and separate that from mm. the social and political and cultural and economic contexts mm. that it exists in. Mm. And, and that means that people are a big part of the environment, mm. and especially in the Arctic. Mm. So that means we need to build relationships and work with northern communities to bring northern perspectives to our audiences and mm -hmm. and uh, we also work a lot with northern communities uh, on connecting them better with science and scientists so that mm. science that goes on is more relevant for the communities in the north. Hmm. Now, would you say that historically science hasn't been that open to, I guess, what we could call traditional knowledge or the knowledge that people have from living and working and and being in a place? Well, I think, yeah, I think that, that science has, you know, science is a specific way of knowing mm -hmm. that is an evidence-based, you know, empirical way of knowing and understanding and describing the world. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Inuit traditional knowledge is a different way of knowing and describing and understanding the world. And, and so it's, it's taken some time, I think, for both traditional knowledge and science to begin to recognize where the strengths of each are mm. and the ways that they can work more effectively together. Mm. We, we spend a lot of time with communities working on just that. We, mm. we identify what the strengths of, of Inuit traditional knowledge or Inuit Kayumaya Tukangi, it's called. It's, it's sort of the entirety of, of Inuit traditional knowledge. So not just about the land and, and the wildlife, but, but also um, the cultural ideals and, and ways of interacting with one another and these sorts of things. It's all mm. sort of encompassed in that. Mm. So we look at the strengths of that and we explore the strengths of science and then we figure out the ways that the two can really work best together mm. to address issues in the North. Mm, excellent. I have a picture here of some youth working on a map. Is this all an right. example of one of those kind of projects? Yeah, this was, um, we, we work a lot with youth to do this. Um, mm. And then the youth work with the rest of their community, so mm. that um, that they're doing most of the most of the hard work, and, and I'm sitting back and watching and listening. Mm. <laughs> but um, in this particular case, we were in Kuluktuk, 
uh, and uh, we were exploring what kind of traditional knowledge even youth have. Hmm. So what, you know, these are 14, 15 year olds for the most part there and, and we were talking about uh, helping them recognize that they actually have at 14 or 15 years old a lot of traditional knowledge that they've gained mm. already. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so then we, uh, we were exploring that and the strengths of that and, mm. and what that can bring. And, and uh, then they'll be working with us to develop research projects to address issues in their community. Oh, that's, that's pretty fantastic here. Yeah. Em empowering the youth to be part of the future protection of their environment. Well, yeah, these are, these are the future leaders in the community. Mm. These are the people who will be on the Hamlet Council and the decision makers in the community and, and helping them to better understand the relationship between traditional knowledge and science just mm. makes both work better mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. so. And I believe traditional knowledge has been pretty important in your life and specifically in saving your life and, and well, keeping you safe. <laughs> Is, would you say that or? Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the Inuit traditional knowledge is built over many, many years of observation and it's tested over time and it's what keeps people alive in the North. Mm. It's what um, it's what helps you understand that you can walk there, but you can't walk here. Uh, it's what um, what keeps a guy like me who doesn't have that knowledge mm -hmm. alive. Right. Um, I think, oh yeah, you have a picture there of, of Saul. He's an elder from, from Joe Haven. Mm. And the number of times he's probably kept me alive, I, I wouldn't even know um, just by making decisions about where we're going to go when uh, or to say, no, you won't walk there. You're going to walk <laughs> here. And to me, it looks exactly the same. Right. <laughs> but I'll go where he says to go. Yes, yes. And, uh, and that knowledge is, is you know, I, I feel pretty vulnerable when I'm out there on the ice by myself or, I'm well, sure. I'm never by myself, but when I'm out there on the ice, because I know that I couldn't survive by myself. Mm. So what, what is that like for you? It's humbling. Mm -hmm. It's a really humbling experience mm -hmm. to know that your life is really in somebody else's hands. Mm. And you have to be humble. You have to go with humility and, and, and understand that your ego has to sit over here somewhere because, you know, that's your ego is what gets you in trouble right out yes there. so I guess there's a lot of uh, trust that you build with people in these communities and relationship building and yeah. that sort of thing and um, you do so Saul, Saul and I have spent a number of nights out on the ice you know and and I think I get to know him and he gets to know me and and we we trust what each other brings to whatever we're doing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, do. You also get a chance to sometimes eat with uh, with the people oh, sure. in the north, and we have a photo of you having some bannock there. Oh right, <laughs> that's sitting in a tent uh, somewhere outside Joe Haven, I think. Yeah. Um, and what other other than bannock? What other kind of you call them? They're called country foods. Country right? foods. Yeah. yeah. What other yeah. kind of country foods have you enjoyed while up there? Oh, I've had. I've had everything from caribou stew to beluga muktuk to narwhal muktuk, which is the, the skin and a little bit of blubber. Um, I've had, uh, well, bannock, as you saw there, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a number of other traditional country foods. Mm. What has been your favorite? Um, Probably muskox, okay. actually. Hmm. Muskox is, it makes, it makes a nice burger, to be honest <laughs> with you. And I'm not much of a meat eater, but oh, I like okay. it. And do they eat mus muskox burgers just like we eat beef burgers here? Yeah. Pretty much? Yeah. 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 In a bun? Um, yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Neat. Uh, are there any other projects that you'd like to share with us about today? Um, well, maybe we could talk a little bit about Smart Ice. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, we, uh, working with these communities and the youth, we identify what some of the, the, the major environmental issues are that, that the communities are facing. Mm. And then once we've done that, we can work with the community to develop research projects to begin to address those issues. And, and in the community of Pond Inlet, one of the big issues has to do with, with sea ice mm. and decreasing sea ice and, and in particular not just how much there is but the quality of the sea ice. It's, it's mm. thinner, mm. it's more dangerous to travel on, it's less predictable. Mm. Um, and we have a project there in Pond Inlet where um, youth, like some of the ones that you saw from Kugluktuk there, youth from Pond Inlet 
um, are mapping, measuring, and monitoring the sea ice conditions mm -hmm. around their community. And that goes back to the community uh, to develop these maps so people understand where it's safe to travel and where it's not safe mm -hmm. to travel at different times. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the data also goes to Memorial University and the Canadian Ice Service and they're using it to develop predictive models hmm. on that sort of scale. Because satellites can tell you where there's ice and where there isn't ice, but right. can't really very well tell you whether it's safe ice or not safe ice or that sort of thing at that kind of a scale. Hmm. And so this, this helps to develop predictive models to be able to do that on that kind of scale too. Oh, that's fantastic work. Yeah. Yeah. When is your next trip up to the Arctic, or what's what's next for you and the Arctic this year? Well, I'll probably be up uh, late this winter or in the spring. Um, again, uh, it's possible I'll be up there in February. Oh wow! Um, for some some other workshops that we're going to be running uh, in Pond Inlet. Um, but uh, I usually get up maybe four times a year. Wow! So. That's fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoy your next trip up there and all the best with the work that you do in the Arctic. And thanks so much for being on our program today. Well, thank you. And thank you all of you for joining us for Northern Spotlights this afternoon. It is the program that takes us north of the Vancouver Aquarium. We have lots of other Northern Spotlights available on our YouTube channel, so check those out. Thanks for coming, everyone, and enjoy your afternoon. <laughs>